Hello, welcome back to the channel. My name is Claire. This is Veg Plot Thickens. You're in the greenhouse with me at the moment, and what I'm going to do first off today is sow or plant some onion sets. These are called rumba. I do have onion sets that I sowed in autumn in one of the veg beds outside, but although they look okay on the top, I'm starting to worry that they've started to rot in the ground. I have sort of felt a few of them and they feel a bit squidgy. So to be on the safe side, I'm going to start a few more off now in here. I'm not doing anything special. I'm just plonking these little sets. That one feels a bit soft. Just plonking these little sets straight into the cells. Obviously I'm just checking that none of them are rotten as I'm putting them in. There you go. Just give them a little watering. Pop them on the shelf here. I don't have a lot else going on in the greenhouse at the moment but I might as well show you what is going on while I'm here. These are the meteor peas. These were sown on the 10th of February. The ones that I sowed over autumn succumbed in the polytunnel when it was minus nine. I did germinate these on the heat pad in the house, but as soon as they germinated, I brought them out to the greenhouse. I do put the cover on them overnight just to sort of protect them from mice, if nothing else. But I think as long as it doesn't go to really cold temperatures again, then they should be okay out here. We're getting over 10 hours of daylight now, so I'm hoping that that means that they shouldn't run too leggy in here. In my little mini greenhouse, inside the greenhouse, I've got some shop-bought herbs that are doing okay. And then I have some onions that I sowed that really do need potting on, so I'll get round to that. And there's some more down here that don't look quite so happy. Now we're going to get on to the second job of the day, which is to sort out the purple sprouting broccoli. It's in one of my original beds on the lawn and it is just starting to crop, which is very, very exciting because it's been here since June last year and everyone else kept sending pictures or I kept seeing pictures on Instagram of everybody else's already harvesting. And I was like, what's going on with mine? It's so tall and yet it's not doing anything. Well, now it is. I won't say it's been neglected because I've just let it grow and it hasn't really needed much attention, but obviously I should have been taking some of the lower leaves off of it because, well, it's like a triffid. take you in for a close-up. Look, there's heads growing all over it. So exciting. But it's in a huge need of having these bottom leaves tidied up. So I'm going to get on and get that done and see if it looks any neater afterwards. Wow, that's a big pile of leaves. I didn't expect. Well, they definitely look a little bit tidier now. And I can just see on this one, I forgot there was three, I only thought there was two. If I zoom in there, I can just see that this smaller one also has some heads coming. It's not all good news though. There has been some disasters on the purple sprouting broccoli front. So I'm gonna leave those to air for a little bit and then I'm gonna show you the sadness behind me. These ones here were planted at exactly the same time as those and these were cut kind of spares for me, but they weren't covered up. Now they've not been attacked by pigeons or anything, but they were really severely affected by the frosts and the storms that we've had. Obviously the Mesh and did fleece over that one as well, did sort of protect them a little bit. Now, they're, I mean, they're obviously the smaller plants anyway, but the disaster is I have two very dead looking plants. Now the stems are rotten, completely rotten, and all the lower leaves have come off. 
but the heads aren't dead. Top leaves on this one don't look completely dead yet for the, how the rest of the plant's gone. And this one looks even better. It's very heavy, but yeah, the top of it is not dead. So I don't quite know whether I should tie it in and see what it does, if any water is getting to it, or whether I just, do I cut my loss losses on it now? Just not sure what to do. But it's most definitely not a very happy sight, is it? Because you can see on a close-up, the head itself is not wilting. I think what I've decided to do is this one really is not doing very good at all so I'm going to cut my losses on that one and then I'm going to use the string from it and maybe even the cane seeing as it's there to so just tie this one up here above the rotten bit and just see just well just see what it does it's got two choices hasn't it oh dear it can't support itself I do feel like this is a vain mission but I'm giving it a chance. Not much of one. I think the weather has already conspired to take its chances away. Well, there's definitely some water getting to the top because there was on that one that I've just cut down some water was coming out of the stem these two are much much smaller but they've stayed healthy Let's cut a couple of the outside leaves off the cabbage and this one this this leaf here is definitely tempting the slugs I just think of the bonus that this is all going to go on the compost. That's those two beds tidied. I think that looks neater now. And we'll use it as an experiment just to see what happens with that one. I have just noticed that this little one here is just starting to get a floret on it. I've never grown purple sprout and broccoli before, so I'd really appreciate you telling me exactly when I would know if it is ready for harvesting. I assume it gets a bit more purple than this. So I'm going to leave it and keep checking on it. Don't want to miss it. While I'm here, I might as well weed and tidy this bed as well. This has got leeks in it and spring cabbages. One of the things I'm going to do is pull up these leeks because it's so wet on the garden. I think they're going to rot if nothing else but obviously I will check them for leaf liner as well just loosen the ground around them things I learnt is that these were definitely not planted deep enough so they're not white enough up the stem
I will clean them off, tidy them up and see if there's anything worth rescuing from them. And if there is, I'll make a batch of leek and potato soup and I'll put it in the freezer. It is a firm family favourite. Now I'm just going to get in here and tidy up the cabbage bed before I put the cover back over. And then that should see them done for a few months. There's definitely some evidence of slug damage to these ones. Just return to this bed because I can't bring myself to leave these few little bits of weeds in here i'll leave this miniature fork over here for this for this job there's a couple of bits of buttercup now i see a lot of posts bemoaning bindweed online um you know either on instagram or or the youtubers and we're quite lucky here that we don't actually have bindweed but what we do have is there is some buttercups in some of the beds but it's cleavers the little sticky bud things oh my life they're everywhere absolutely everywhere constantly pulling them up i know they're not as deep rooted as things like bindweed but they're such a menace and if i've got bare arms i get such a rash from them in summer when they like sort of stick on your skin the sap must make me react so i'm not a fan not a fan at all. I'll just take these few leaves off. Again, these are just spare um, cabbages that I just thought I'd shove them in. I thought, that's them done. And I'll just slip the cover back over. I've never fastened it down. It's never gone anywhere. In all the strong winds we've had, it's stayed put. I get a lot of criticism on social media about having the wood chip paths on the new plot but then I mean look at the mess here on the floor. There's generally a good reason why we make these decisions. Some of it is aesthetics. I do like the look of the raised beds and wood chip but mainly is because I know how wet this ground gets in winter. That's these beds all tidied up. I'm really hoping that this purple sprouting broccoli hurries up now and finishes because this bed and potentially this bed next to it have both got to move shortly. Behind me you can see the greenhouse that I'm using. It's an 8x6 greenhouse. It's stood since 1987. But we're going to be silly and we're going to move it. Tempting fate really, you know. It's not broken anything while it's stood there but we are going to move it. And the reason we're moving it is because we've had a second greenhouse that we've sourced locally and we were going to put that next to it but we decided that because of all of the tall trees these would actually be safer here. So the first greenhouse is going to go on the spot there where we removed the mini polytunnel to give to my sister and there'll be a little space between them. So the second greenhouse will be sort of here somewhere and it will leave me with this bed on the end so what I'm going to do is bring the wood from at least that bed to put it on top of this bed and raise this one up higher hopefully that could be a bit of a salad bed there because they'll like the shade I might even put a few beans at the front of it just to give them even more shade over the height of summer so that's really really exciting you can also see that we're still having problems in this area with water drainage or lack thereof so this year we're definitely going to dig out and put in some deep sort of French drains across here. It's just, it's lower here, so we need to take the water out that way. Maybe put one this side of here as well to help. And me and Duncan have also been to collect something very exciting to put here, which I need to get sorted in the next couple of weeks. But again, I'd like the ground to dry out a little bit before I do that. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next video. Bye.